Okay, so that's a video of you. So do we want to go? Are we starting? We can hear you, yes. Okay. And we're recording. Well, Hello. let's do do we want to unblind you? This? No, no, no. I want so we're gonna start. Okay. And we're gonna non-blur the background. Oh great. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> get this out this way. And then when it goes to Okay. Well, hello everyone. Um so we have a couple people online right now as well. So this is uh I'm Danny Bleach. I am our recreation manager overseeing our aquatics, athletics, and outdoor rec. Uh, with me is Matt Rosina, who is our parks manager, who handles uh, a lot of our capital projects for our parks. Um, what we have today is our second public input meeting in regards to phase two of the tennis center improvements. Our first meeting was at the Rec and Parks Commission about a month ago, um, where we let our commissioners kind of have a look at these same slides, give their opinions, and now we're going to bring it to the public. And then what we're going to do is this video is being recorded right now. So we're going to have it online for about 30 days. Uh, so anyone who isn't here currently watching it live can watch it recorded and then offer any kind of thoughts or comments back to us in regards to what you see today. So what we're going to do is have Matt go through his slides. Uh, we're going to look at the numbers that are available. And then we'll take your comments and go from there. Will the comments also be recorded and available for people? The, the comments one? As long as you speak loud enough to be heard by the screen. Yes, <laughs> um, so, Matt, I will let you fire away. Okay, thank you, Danny. <clears throat> so, everyone, for everyone that's attending, my name is Matt Brzezina, again, City of Reno Parks Manager. I oversee the operations and maintenance of all the city parks, uh, including the Tennis Center, and I also oversee capital improvement projects for the park system. So, uh, will that work? Okay. Um, no, no, nothing changed. Oh, no. I have a slideshow uh, and presentation that I'll have available. I'm screen over and that up here momentarily. Hang on. I can't see the other screen. That's no. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Karina. Okay. All right. There you go. And so the yeah, they should be able to see it on Zoom already. Okay, perfect. So um, a little bit of background about this project. Uh, the American Rescue Plan Act was the final round of the COVID relief uh, funding coming from the federal government. Um, the city re received approximately $54 million to distribute to the different departments and different, um, different agencies that the city works closely with um, for many different aspects of um, health and wellness across the city. So, um, you know, housing was included, parks and recreation. Um, I believe infrastructure received some funding for uh, funding with the, the ARPA money. So uh, $2.3 million was allotted for improvements at the Reno Tennis Center. And that was directed towards court uh, resurfacing. And then any other improvements that we could fit into the, uh, into the scope of work. So phase one consisted of reconstructing courts 13 through 16, which are the northernmost courts with post-tension concrete. And what that is, is it's the way that they assemble the concrete courts with um, rebar that is pulled in tension. And that, um, that removes the need to put expansion joints to the courts. So it makes it really handy with uh, tennis and pickleball as you're not constantly battling the, the different expansion joints. Is that the same stuff as they did the original pickleball courts with, or is that a different kind of thing? Um, I, be there's, I believe there's six other concrete courts there. They're the ones that are a little bit higher than the walk-in. I'm not too familiar with the Reno Tennis Center site. I'm just wondering if they're going to be the same surface like what we already have on the pickleball courts. They, they are. They will be. I think they are the concrete. You, yes, you'll see uh, the post tension part. The advantage of that is that there's far less of those cracking and skinny little oh, wear yeah. that we uh, deal with over the, the years just from wear and tear. Is the same playing surface? Yes, same playing yep. surface. Yep. They will all have the color code, um, standard color code surface that you see on all tennis and pickleball courts. 
So that first phase, um, the contract, the construction contract was approved May 10th um, with Spanish Springs construction for a little over $950,000. And that includes the, the concrete and some, some fencing replacements on those uh, four ports. Will those have lights? They will not be lighted. No. Will they be free wired for me? Um, we'll get there. Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so with that nine hundred fifty thousand dollars, that leaves us with just a little over. <laughs> oh, I have it. Just a little over one point three million dollars. So one million three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, and that's why we're here today to discuss how we're going to utilize that funding for uh, additional improvements at the ten minute minimum. Um, I'll go through the list of what Danny, myself, and the concessionaire at the tennis center um, recommend as the highest priority projects that we can use the remaining funding for, and then we'll open it up to other suggestions, recommendations, and um, and kind of ranking of how you all feel that uh, you want to see these projects prioritized. So, uh, without a doubt, the biggest recommendation that we had uh, even from the public, was resurfacing the, the existing asphalt courts that have cracking. And those are the courts that aren't 13 through 16. We're already redoing those. This would be to do an asphalt overlay on, um, it looks like, six of the remaining courts that, that are failing. Um, I believe four of those six are higher priority. The final two, um, we can prioritize that if, if we don't feel like it's a high need right now. Um, but our recommendation is at a minimum to resurface four of those six boards for basketball. Sorry. Are the four or all six, mm -hmm. are they all with tennis courts or some pickleball? I believe these, are tennis courts. these are all tennis These are all tennis Yes. So I, I believe courts one, two, and five and six were the highest priority. So those are the closest to the parking. This slide shows uh, another picture of the needed surface port resurfacing. Um, some of these cracks have posed safety issues with some of the players, members. Um, and again, we feel that this is a very high priority. Nope. Uh, um, next in line, we, we get continuous requests for added shade. Um, shade's a tough one at the tennis center just because uh, it needs to be high enough for walkability, usability, but also, that center walkway is very narrow, meaning that your, your shade coverage is, is limited at times. What we've also discussed with the concessionaire is to incorporate some shade. On, on the picture on the right is the, the walkway entrance, and he had recommended shading that to add as a, a registration area for tournaments, um, a gathering area. We decided to put benches underneath to where you can um, prep and get ready to play while you're not there waiting um, outside the the unshaded. You can see from that picture there, you don't get a lot of shade from me. No, I, I get that. It comes this way. It right happens there. at a certain amount of time. Or, or at certain times, the shade is better. But honestly, there, there's no, no way for us to fix that. Um, yeah. We could look at maybe adding some screens on the side to, to add shade. Just wondering but, if it's worth money adding more shade that you don't really get shade from. Right. I, I think the picture on the right, I, I play at this. Reno Tennis Center, like uh, a few times a week, and I've never stepped foot on that side. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe with shade going there, I would walk there more, but I like no one ever goes back there. Um, probably because the the screen, you can't really see any of the players from that particular area. But I think, like you said, if you have tournament registration and you like seating there, then people might come there more. But I've sure. never actually had been back there. Yeah. yeah, that's at that very front right there when you would. So obviously the trailer's right here, mm -hmm. and then the start of the hallway, and then it'd be that spot right to the left. Right to the left. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I mean, it's there wouldn't be any reason for you to now. Right. It's right. kind of unusable, but um, the idea was if we could shade it, uh, have it be a gathering area, maybe for the next more people. Would yeah. That it, it it would be a shaded place uh, of recovery or relief. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, I just heard I guess not you're not gonna hurt my yeah, yeah, it's public input, but we're all here. It's definitely an open discussion. Yeah. Feel free to uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Think of all people in the tennis prison. So uh, you're fine. But on the course, is there any talk on where there are not 
benches like between courts, which will have an overhang, where players that just completed are waiting, let's say maybe to settle for heaven. And then usually uh, in most tennis facilities, that uh, two-sided benches, with yeah, we do have them in, in basically in the middle of all the courts. We could always get more. They took them off 15, 16, or whatever the, the bar was. We used to gather there for pickleball, and that was the only pickleball course. And there was a table and benches. Everybody used to sit there, but it's gone. Okay. So there's just a right. couple of benches. Yeah. And it's not like you need two. You no. Use one. <laughs> well, which is good to know. I mean, because obviously we know those ones in the middle. Of a lot of those courts right now, we obviously we've ordered those, we bought those. So right. those are easy. Well, Again, yeah, we use that park. Yeah, which is good. And by all means, like let us know because that's yeah. that's why we're here. Of course, that provided shade. You know, maybe some ladies can sit out or stand in, and uh, it became a circuit for this one. That's perfect. Yeah, you can't do it with the park courts now because they're all netting in there. Mm -hmm. There's a gap, and if we're going to redo the, the drawing, but that would be a nice thing to have. No, that's perfect. Thank you. I made a note of that. We have a couple of questions from people on Zoom. Okay. Do we want to take them now or wait until you uh, finish your slides? Yeah, let's wait. We'll wait till yeah, the end. Okay. I have a few more slides. Yeah. Let's get through the slides. Once we, once we get to that, then we can jump back at any point. Okay. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, another um, another possibility we are discussing are court lighting on four of the courts. Um, due to uh, lighting regulations, we can't have them on the closest courts to uh, the, the Plumes Avenue or Plumes Road. They have to, the lighting courts have to be offset from the street. So um, what we would propose is add lighting or at least um, infrastructure for lighting at the I believe it's the pickleball courts and the, the new courts that we are going to resurface so <clears throat> and they would um, just due to construction uh, and construction ability uh, the lighting would have to be at the perimeter of the courts they would have to be in the center walkway and on the outside of the perimeter of the tennis center so, Much like it, you yeah, can see them this yeah. way. As the existing lights are, yeah, we don't have the ability to put um, uh, lights in the in the center of the courts. So, take the next slide. Um, another idea that we've thought of is to repave the center walkway. Currently, does not meet ADA standards. Um, there's plenty of trip hazards. As you can see, the asphalt's degrading. Uh, I believe it's semi improved from about midway, uh, but this would be the, the final half of the center walkway. Um, and we'd also have proposals to uh, fix the fence that has been windblown. Um, I don't recall which ports those are, but um, I think seven. But due to the, the wind screens uh, absorbing some of that wind pressure, um, a lot of the fencing has started to collapse. Uh, with the fence repairs, we we're also proposing to uh, gate all of the accesses on the perimeter of the tennis center. That way, we don't have anybody jumping in or uh, any vandalism at night. We're going to add gates where there aren't any gates for the pickleball courts. Because we only have like two gates for eight courts. Oh, in the fencing itself in the walkway. Uh, that's a good idea. We can we can definitely yeah. discuss yeah. that and see how feasible it is. Just another tool, yeah, right. That's actually a lot And I believe this is the last thing on my list, but um, is to improve the office building, um, kind of have an expanded pro shop office area, um, a little bit more adequate than the, the Sandy Hut trailer that's currently there. Um, and with that, we had proposed a few minor restroom upgrades um, due to the simplicity of the restroom building that's currently on site. We don't have a lot of upgrade ability, but there are some things like soap dispensers, hand dryers, um, just smaller amenities that we can look at adding into the restroom to make it a little bit more comfortable. Next slide, please. Um, 
So here's the preliminary cost estimate. I know it's um, rather small, but uh, it, is, it takes into account everything that I had just discussed. And should we do all of those improvements, I'm estimating that we would be over budget by about $226,000. So it's not something that we can do everything. We're gonna have to pick and choose, but that does take into account resurfacing all six of those ports with asphalt um, that accounts for lighting for additional sets of ports uh, and then a substantial restroom improvement fund. So, so all of that's negotiable. All, um, all of that can be discussed as well as new improvements can be included into this. Um, just for everyone's background, um, this was presented to the Reno um, Recreation and Parks Commission last month. And they recommended doing all of the top things. And if there's enough funding, put the remaining funding into uh, the pro shop building. But like I said, um, we're happy to take any recommendations or discussion and try to incorporate that into this budget before we finalize. So at this point, um, what we would do is obviously with the gate, uh, the gates and the other ideas that you might have, as well as the questions online, basically what we want to hear is based on this, based on what you've seen, you know, offer us any other improvements. If there's improved, if you want to grade, cool. We definitely want court lighting to move up to be like the second most important thing to you, whatever it might be. Uh, we're just going to take note of that. So we make sure we prioritize them kind of as the group wants. Um, and then obviously we're going to get quotes, scope of work, go from there. So um, yeah, we're, we're still going to need to take into account um, both engineer and staff's uh, professional opinion in this. So we can't guarantee that all ideas can be incorporated, but we'll definitely do that to the best of our ability. Um, and I also want to keep in mind that um, this meeting and this discussion is strictly about the capital improvements that, uh, that we would recommend, not nothing to do with the concessionaire or functionality of the tenant center. Um, strictly capital improvements. I think I, I personally would agree with what the people said that you know, the new office pro shop really is the thing that benefits Randy. I mean, almost everybody has their pickleball row or their bat paddle or their tennis bracket or balls or whatever. But if there's leftover money, but that would be at least my no. at least so priority, priority. Stick the funding into the playability. Yeah, and stuff. The people that are going to mm -hmm. use the thing and play it. Maybe a few more benches, you know, because there aren't a lot of benches while you're waiting to play. You end up standing around in the sun a lot. Sure. They want it, they don't even broken in the old paper. And the grandstands are all that's part of the And it's completely on show. Yeah, that would be nice to have a little shade on the grandstand. Yeah. A lot of people would benefit from that. Sure. Yeah. The way it's already uh, you would priority for that is off the moon. That should be the last thing. Perfect. And that's a big chunk of money. I'm pushing it. I mean, I don't know what you can do with $5,000. You can't make that a safe single bed, <laughs> even a good soap dispenser. <laughs> but I mean, that's still a small thing. Plus, people are going to steal it, not us. <laughs> it, it, it always happens. If you've ever been around the public facility, people <laughs> steal toilet paper. That's why they don't put toilet We, we have. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, so anyway. Um, uh, there's some questions online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we, um, no. There's a few comments. I can read them, um, but they'll be part of the recorded record. If you don't want me to read them, there's 12 of them. If um, I mean, but we have yeah. some hands raised now that I can. Yeah. yeah okay. Let's have the hands All right. Raised. So let's hear from Mel. Mel, I'll be giving you the ability to speak. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself, and we should okay. be able to hear you. Okay, I've got a ton of questions here that I put in the questions already, but I'll start with the first one. Um, I would like to know what kind of feedback you got for phase one of this project, um, because uh, I'm a big user. I'm there many times during the week, and no one ever talked to the users from what we can tell. And when we did have a meeting with Randy, um, the concessionaire, he pretty much ignored all of our suggestions, which is a lot of what you're talking about today. Um, so you know, this is public money being spent. Um, he is a for-profit concessionaire. 
running it as a for-profit business and certainly has the right to do that. But I guess I question the city's role in um, using only his input as quote the expert when in fact there is a lot of public using these courts and we suggested many of these things listed um, should not be in the, spe the spending of the money part, including, I mean, I don't know where this new office and pro shop came from because that was never discussed with any of us at all. All you have to do is look at how much money is being spent on um, the courts versus things for the concessionaire. Um, it's, it's very imbalanced here. So um, that's a number of my questions thrown into one and I would like to get some responses from the city. Sure, thank you, Mel, I appreciate that. And honestly, that, that's why we're here is to, is to discuss these um, improvements. Um, I mean, that is the purpose of this public input meeting. So the, the phase one improvements were strictly tennis court improvements and that was, that was staff driven. That had nothing to do with the concessionaire. That was um, a project that has been in the city's capital improvement plan for years. And once we had the ability to have this federal funding, um, we wanted to direct that to the playability of the Reno Tennis Center, which, um, in, in my opinion, benefits nobody but the players. I, I don't feel like that um, benefits the concessionaire. So, um, and also all of these projects, while they've been discussed with the, the concessionaire and uh, members of the public, they are also in our capital improvement plan as well. So this didn't come about just because of the concessionaire. Um, these things, these are all things that the city has been planning for um, years. We've just never have the, had the funding to do it. And we feel like this is our opportunity. Okay, so um, I was on a phone call with Naomi Dewar and Danny Gleason where he absolutely said that we were gonna get input into phase one. So um, something happened along the way there that that didn't happen. And um, again, I, you know, I, I look at this and I say, this is public money being spent. Um, and certainly user feedback should be part of how public money is spent in the city of Reno. Obviously this is water under the dam at this point in time, but I will share with you that that has left a poor taste in the minds of a lot of the people that have played tennis there at the Reno Tennis Center, which is why you don't have a lot of people on the Zoom right now. Um, they feel like they weren't listened to before and they're not gonna be listened to now. I represent a whole bunch of people who are afraid to give input to you all because they feel like um, no input was taken before when Randy had a meeting that in fact I requested that he um, have for us. And so the lack of, um, or the seeming apathy right here today with not a lot of people here from the tennis community is really a, re a result of lack of um, respect for our opinions that we shared earlier. Okay, well, I, I appreciate your input and your honesty. Um, like I said, we didn't have public input for the phase one that was- it, I know that. Well, it was, it was strictly regarding the, the court resurfacing, which yeah, um, yeah but that but that that does need input because it was a question of what courts needed to be fixed first and what courts could be spent with that nine hundred and ninety five thousand dollars and there is a court the court five which you have in phase two um, is we have to completely almost take it out of play now because it is so bad so if somebody had been listening to us we probably could have gotten that as part of the first phase, which is a pretty significant thing. People have um, sprained their ankles. People have fallen on that before. It's in much worse shape than I think that the other courts had much more as a safe, safety hazard. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mel. Um, before we go to the next commentary, I'm gonna see if I can improve the sound. Um, okay, Lucy, I'm gonna give you the ability to speak now. Can you try that out for us? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, dokie. Um, Lucy, are you, are you saying anything? We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I'm speaking. Okay, one second. Can I can hear. I, say, I think we can hear each other on Zoom, but it might be tougher in the room. I'm not sure. The speaker's working. Lucy? Yes. You? Okay, we can hear you now. Okay, excellent. Sorry, Thanks. unfortunately I wasn't able to amplify the sound, but um, we can hear you, so.
Go ahead. Uh, way, everybody's hovering around the computer now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, thank you guys for this presentation and the opportunity to attend from um, the Zoom process too. I appreciate it greatly. Um, I like this, what you guys are seeing, what you've put up here is this last slide. So it helps define what you're looking at. And um, I think it's great that you have a priority on safety items first, your resurfacing of the existing courts, the center path, um, the, what is that? Yeah, repave the center path, um, repairing the fences. Those are definitely items that are, are safety issues for the, the city. So, and they will be excellent use of the funds going forward for the longevity of the center and for the opportunity for people to play in the community. If you go back, can you guys go back to the shade structure uh, slide that you put up though? Cause I kind of want to address some things as one that has um, played and taught at the facility in the past. And um, and oh, yeah, there we go. So looking at the at your slide on the left, you can see that the way the shade structure actually does not help cover the center. It only helps cover the center path during um, specific hours of the day when the sun is high. When you are early in the morning, um, that shade structure actually um, goes right through the center of the court that is, uh, you can see that uh, a pro is teaching on over there uh, to your left-hand side. And it actually makes it very difficult to, to see the see the ball, see the court, things like that. And then the late afternoon, it puts the shade right in the center of that court on the on, on your right-hand side there, creating the same uh, shade structure and issue, um, shade issue while playing. But more importantly is dealing when, especially since we had a, a we'll call it a, a long winter this year. Sometimes that shade um, onto the center of that left-hand court, which is court number two, and then on the right court number three, it actually creates a problem with the melt out of the court in the winter time. So I think some further study on how to create shade at this facility. I understand that everybody wants shade there, but um, a better idea on how to utilize shade in that facility. The um, same thing when you look at the slide on the right hand side, when you look at putting shade um, structure on that backhand side of that court, it would be creating a similar issue on the backhand um, piece of court two and court one there as far as melt out goes in the winter time. So it's a two season thing, you know, obviously people want sh shade in the summer, but we also need the courts to melt out in the winter for use. And as we know, the microclimates of Reno, it can be, um, you know, snowing in South Reno, but actually clear and able to play it at the Plumas courts. So it would be great to be able to look at further study of how that shade actually affects those facilities. My other concern is that um, some of us discussed is behind court two there where you're on that slide on the right is, you know, the landscaping there that is washed out into that area, that uh, asphalt area. I'm not sure if that asphalt piece is part of the um, is part of that what you guys are talking about in um, resurfacing for safety purpose also, but a lot of that um, landscaping you can see washes down into that so it does create a different surface in that area and but that's not city. My understanding is that's not city landscaping that's part of the county landscaping so it's kind of a battle of how to keep that area clear in that process so something I want to bring forth on that the whole shade structure is to really take a look at it. But if you guys can put uh, for equality on these courts, it would be great to be able to see the lighting run all the way down, um, at least into the pickleball facility so that there's, you know, four tennis and um, eight pickle that get that get lit or if it can go all the way down, then it's uh, six and eight, that would be great for the entire community of equality on that. So that's my input and thank you very much for this opportunity. Sure. Thank you, Lucy. Um, great comments and, and we'll incorporate those into our decision. I appreciate that. I think that's it for Zoom online comments. So then if any members of the public have re raised if you have any other thoughts, ideas. Mel, did you have anything additional to share? Jump to this. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Um I, I just want to reiterate one point. And I, you know, and it's I've already said it, but I, I get concerned when money, and I'm an administrator, right? This is a I'm an administrator by training. But when you spend more money on administration than you do on the actual function of the business um, based on your budget there, I think it's a big red flag. And I will share, I will go back and share all this with, you know, people that I play with 
Um, but I can tell you they're not going to be thrilled to see a $700,000 new office for the concessionaire when um, we still have a lot of other functional improvements that could be made um, at the city, including fences between the courts so that the balls don't keep running onto each other's courts. If you go down to Minogue High School or you go to some of the other courts that are put together, um, you would see um, a, 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 a half fence that goes down between the courts so that the balls don't go to the other courts. Um, I think some of that 700,000 could be much better spent in creating those fence structures between the courts so that people don't have to keep interrupting play from the other side of the, um, the court in those areas. So that's my last piece of um, feedback. And um, thanks again for the opportunity. Sure, thanks again, Mel. And um, actually that separation fence wasn't something that we had on the list. It's not something that was on my radar. I'm not a tennis player, but, um, but it, that's the feedback that we need is our ideas that we don't have on this list that, that are important to you guys. So uh, don't hesitate to throw ideas like that out. Um, and like I said, we're trying to be all encompassing. The, the ideas that we had on the spreadsheet aren't, aren't set, aren't final, they're just ideas. And um, at this point, as you had stated, the, the new office building is absolutely the lowest on the priority list if, if it even makes the list. So it was just an idea. Like I said, we're, put, we're putting all ideas on the table here for discussions. So I appreciate that. All right. And now we will go public. Oh, perfect. I had four things that could be done pretty cheaply. It could be given like the kind of improvements to be valuable and that they're not expensive to build up. The first one is an off switch for the lights. So at night, you can turn the lights on, but you can't turn them off. So they'll, so if you're done at 7 30, they'll stay on until 10 p.m. at night. And I think it's just, it probably wastes electricity and money for the private city out of them. But it also could be nice because they have their lights. Um, another idea is outlets um, on the courts, or maybe just the ones in the back. There's a tennis ball machine, and you can only use it on one court. Because that's as far as the extension cord will reach. Uh, it would, the ball machine can be disruptive for the more serious players um, in the more desirable courts. So we can put the ball machine like in the farther back courts, like now the back there that we did. A third idea is our court signs to tell you which court you're planning on. I think some do have court signs, um, but they could be clearer, and that might not be the nice. thing. Yeah. Um, my fourth and final suggestion is a uh, at Colin Club when you want to get your racket restrung, but it's outside of the office hours. Um, you can just slide your racket through like a, a gap in the door specifically to um, like to put your racket through when you're closed. Something similar at um, at the Reno Tennis Center would be good. I think sometimes the office isn't always staffed, so um, you can't really drop off your racket. So just like it's like a mail slot in your door, you just shove it right through. Or if you have extra funds, we could do like the Amazon lock box lockers, where you can like scan your phone and the pop open. And then uh, and then someone asked me to ask for an indoor court. <laughs> so. That would be really nice because you can't play really indoors in the winter, I mean, outdoors in the winter. So, a max center, you know, that's way up to the budget part. Sure. I mean, that would be really nice to have. Sure. Absolutely. Is there any other lost ability to see the online participants? Nothing further from them. Any other comments? Curious, which we both have never seen anybody walk down. Um, we was, what kind of work would be done on that really? Okay, resurface. Um, yeah, we could resurface it. I can, I can tell from the picture that the asphalt is um, degrading pretty well, but, but it's, it, it doesn't lead to any more specific other than for an employee. Um, functions, but when does it appear on the line item? Yeah, that work on that. Uh, there it was included with the shade structures. Um, meaning, could you put up the 
Yes, um, you'll have to tell me when to stop. <laughs> Is it moving? Uh, yes. No, no. Thank you. No, but I'm sitting there. There you go. Okay. So, which line item? It would be the French change function. So, the fourth one down. They will be. Um, basically, what we'll do is at the end of this, we'll take it, we'll make it a video, we'll email it out again so if anyone wants to watch it or obviously scroll forward to the slides, you can look at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. How much you ask No, no, that was. I'm just curious what the comments are in case we want to comment on the comments. <laughs> They were they were well captured by the recording, so we'll we'll send that out to you guys so that you can review them. Comment on the comment. I mean, sure. there's so many you can't just read them off. Oh, um, yes, the the comments that were submitted um, were during Matt's presentation, and they were from Mel, so she covered she covered everything verbally that she put into the chat. Um, she did rewrite their attempts. Oh. Them. Mel, let me give you permission to speak one moment. All right, you should be good to unmute. Thank you. And and I'm just going to make one more plea. Is there really nothing you can do in phase one for court five? And what is the timing on, on phase two? Um. I mean, you have to go out there and take a look at court five. It's really bad. And if you're talking about putting priorities first and safety first, I, I guess I just don't understand why that couldn't be included in the first um, phase. Because I we don't know when second phase is going to be, right? Um, I mean, it'll be within the next 12 months. It'll yeah, be but see, that, that means 12 months of people playing on a very unsafe court. Well, if I, um, well, so um, as far as timelines, phase one is, is already, uh, approved. We have a contractor lined up, and and I believe ground is going to be broken. Oh, but the concessionaire told us he said there there could be changes made. Uh, not to phase one. That's already we well, already have an acceptable not what, bid. Not what he not what he told us, but okay. I, I apologize for his misinformation, but um, this this project the, the first part of the project has already been through city council and and approved and and ready to go. Well, that's a, a and again, I think that that. Um, that's unfortunate because if it's another year, I mean, that court's going to get nothing but worse and worse and worse, especially after another winter. Well, I, I tell you what, um, Danny, what's the timeline on public input? Is, are you um, 30 days. 30 days. Okay. After the 30 day process, we're going to, um, we're going to finalize our recommendations and then um, whatever project that we need to scope out, we'll scope out and expedite it as fast as we can. And that's including the court resurfacing. So I imagine that's gonna be on the top of our list and that'll be pushed as fast as we can get it. And if we can get it in this year's asphalt cycle, um, we would love to in the fall, um, but we, we just might be pushed a little bit on time. Okay, thank you. And I, I just encourage you to go out and take a look at it versus just hearing from me. Yes, yes. I, I believe some of the pictures I have in the slide are of court five. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So when will phase one start? Um, we had the pre-construction meeting last week, so which means um, as soon as permits are ready, they're going to start removing those courts. So uh, they can be anywhere. It should be within the next thirty days. The, the courts are will be finished this this summer slash fall. They have to be done before um, the temperatures get too cold for concrete. So everything will be ready by the by fall. Okay. And once it starts, how long does it need to stop? I mean, um, it will be done by fall, but is it a three month process to do it or? It is, it's probably going to be a 60 working day contract. Um, don't quote me on that. I don't have the papers in front of me, but um, it'll likely be about 60 days of construction. And we'll put signs up or something so we know when we can. Yep. We're going to be starting such and such a date. So yep. when yep. we have a group come, in the middle of the construction. Once, once we have a, an exact start date and a notice to proceed with the contract, we'll put a sign up and outline everything. Cool. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Um, well, if there are no other questions, thoughts, then what we'll do is from this point here, um, we'll take this video. We will be uh, putting it on our city YouTube uh, channel. It will be available, like we said, for 30 days for additional comments, um, ideas, things that we may have missed today that might pop into your head. Um, and then what we'll do is, as Matt mentioned, we will take all of the thoughts, ideas, comments, we'll loop them all together and we'll start scoping out the project, obviously seeing what uh, we can afford with the, with the 1.3 million and then um, kind of move forward with with, with you know, putting these up a bit and going from there. Um, so obviously, thank you all for attending today and um, have a great day. Where's the city YouTube channel? I didn't know that we had a YouTube channel for the city. Uh, you could at least search City of Reno and then um, all applicable videos will pop up. Yeah, it's, it's usually what City Council puts all their videos on. So you can always watch live City Council meetings, things like that. So it's City of Reno dot the um, it'll we'll, have, and we'll have an email out to everyone. So the email that you got that basically said, hey, come to this meeting today, oh. we'll have that same email come out that says, hey, here's the link to the thing. Oh, okay. So we'll make it real easy for you. That's a calendar. <laughs> if you don't commit all of the dollars, do you lose it? Is that kind of a deal? Um, yeah, at, at the end of the the federal period, any unused fund will have to be returned. But um, I assume with the budget identified as a, a net deficit, that we'll be able to use all the fundings, especially with the added ideas that everyone proposed today. The, the money has to basically be allocated by the end of 2024 and then used by the end of 2026. So realistically, we, as Matt mentioned, we'll use all the funds. <laughs> We can have it in a meeting if you have leftover. If, if we need a public input, we'll make it that. <laughs> you guys have a savings account for new nets or something that, you know, yeah. might come up. Yeah, unfortunately, these can't, um, they have to go towards active construction projects, so we can't use it for safeguarding our, yep. But potentially some of the things that, obviously, the benches, for example, um, part, part of my budget is to buy the benches from time to time. So, if we don't have to spend it on benches because we're able to construct a, a process in there, then that money can potentially be used for this instead. So there's options. Yeah. So her comments about the gates. So I mean, it's just terrible the way they have to like set up. When are you going to have a drawing of that that we can put input in to say these are really going to need to be over here? Or, you know, this is the necessary. Here. You know, because the, the situation there, you're going through the gate, they're going through the nets, people are tripped. I mean, it's it's really quite you talk about the pickleball. Yeah, the pickleball. Well, I don't care. Work the others too, but when the tennis guys come, you go in that gate, so you've got to cross one one whole court to get to the other one. Um I think at this point we still have to see well. I mean, see, we'll go out there, we'll look at everything. I think any input that you can give to us first, um, you know, whether it's a drawing or an email, um, we would prefer that. It, it it starts to slow the process down if we have to have a public input um, after every every session, right? Because then we just add X and Y. Yeah, to work to work with when you're starting your construction. Yes, absolutely. And so where are those drawings? If your contract is going to be saying, oh, okay, well, I need to put this gate here, or this gate over here. Well, that would be well down the planning process. They have to they have to know all of the input to create the construction plan. Um, so yeah, because I just thought you said it was going to start start here shortly. Right. But I think they just been started maybe starting. Yes, yeah, ends. very shortly. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's why you mentioned like if if you were to. As Matt mentioned, like let's say you you have a Google map on top of the pickleball court, and you just sent us an email that said, "I think a gate here and a gate here would be great," and just for that picture, then that's what we would be able to present with whatever with whoever might be when it comes to, "Hey, here's the project we want. Can you do this to every company?" They'd be able to turn around and say yes or no. Yeah, 
And if it's more effective for me or someone to meet on site and point them out or do it over the phone, email, whatever's best, um, we're happy to work with them. So you'll have a really good idea when you get to those pickleball courts and you start seeing those people parking and climbing. Yeah. Unfortunately, not, not every recommendation is feasible. Um, so we have to keep in mind that, that there are certain ways that the, the courts can and can't work, um, where gates can be put. Um, so yeah, we want to do everything that we can to accommodate every. I mean, everybody's just curious why, when we build that beautiful thing there, they did only put. And that also could be tied to funding. We, you know, we have very limited funds to make these improvements. And so when we can improve some of the safety features, we may not might not be able to fund some of the accommodation that he's like gates on the other side. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised. I, I, you know, very few 20 year olds. They're all self. That's good to know. 20 year olds. Anybody, you know, you can email me. Daniel just replied to that message. I don't know where that was. 